Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to part 2 of my ultimate guide to Endwalker preparations. So in part 1, we went over Disciples of War, Magic, Hand and Land, and Currencies. In part 2, we're going to be talking about side stories. Now the only story that you really need to complete is the main story quest. Death Until Dawn is the last quest that you need in order to unlock Endwalker. So everything else is optional. If you are that type of person that is into lore and world building, a lot of these side stories will help with that. Now the main story writer for Shadowbringers recommends doing Coils and the Omega 8-man raid. Since Coils pertains to Lord Bahamut, and we are getting his brother Vitra in Endwalker, and the Omega kind of pertains to the Omega variant that we see in the benchmark, which most likely will be a world boss. So those are the two that she recommends doing. Plus the story is pretty good. Alright, so the first thing on this list is going to be the Binding Coil of Bahamut. I already did a separate video on this, but I'm putting this in this video anyway. So Coils must complete 2.0. You will come to the Waking Sands at X 6.1, Y 4.9. Orion J should be standing here, but since I've already did it, he won't be for me. You must uh, accept the quest primal awakening you come back here for the coils part two and then the final coil to finish off the raid next is going to be the alexander eight-man raid now alexander cannot be unlocked until you completed heaven's ward main story quest of 3.0 so here in idleshire at x 7.5 y 6.6 you want to accept the quest disarmed from Slowfix, who is right here Again, I've already made a video on how to unlock Alexander. Once you have unlocked Alexander, the subsequent ones will be unlocked right here at the Big West shortstop. The Omega Raid will be unlocked in Rogers Reach after completing the Stormblood main story quest of 3.0. The hunt for Omega will be right here at 12.5x, Y 12.3, and you'll talk to Wedge. Unfortunately, he's not here for me since I already did it, but this is where you can find him. The story will contain, continue into the fringes over here to the Yawn area where he landed, and then this is where you'll continue on with the rest of the raid. I will be making a separate video on how to unlock this on my alt. So the last eight-man raid is going to be the Eden raid from Shadowbringers. After you've completed the Shadowbringers main story quest of 5.0, the Anxious Crystarium Guard, which would be behind me if it wasn't already done, will have the quest in the middle of nowhere. So it's going to be at X 9.7, Y 12.3. This will take you out to Armorang, past the giant wall of crystal, where you'll be going to complete the raid itself. Again, I will be making a separate video for that as well. But that so next is going to be the 24-man raid without the Crystal Tower, since you need the Crystal Tower to gain access to Shadowbringers. You should have that done already, and I've already made two videos on how to unlock that, and of course troubleshoot if you're having problems. So we're going to continue from Heaven's Ward to Shadowbringers. So in Heaven's Ward, we have the Shadow of Mach, which you will be here in the foundation area of the pillars, at X 14.2, Y 10.6, right outside the Astrologian's Guild. So you'll be talking to the Sky Pirate NPC, which will be standing where I am right now. It will take you all the way out to the Sea of Clouds, to the northern part of the area, and then you'll be dealing with the rest of the story there. Now for Stoneblood, we're going to be killing two birds with one stone here. So Kai Ten here will have two different quests. One for Shadowbringers, and one for Stormblood. For Stormblood, it's going to be the Return to Evilies 24-man raid. I've already made a video about this already. But Dramatis Persona, with Kaiten here at X 12.1, Y 12.3 in Kugane, will have the Evilies raid for you to unlock. In Shadowbringers, which you have to complete the 5.0 main story quest, and 4.0 main story quest for Stormblood, respectively, to unlock the Bojan Southern Front area, as well as the Relic Weapon for Shadowbringers. But the story for Boja kind of coincides with the Evil East 24-man raid as well. 
So the last 24-man raid is going to be the Yohai Dark Apocalypse, which has nothing to do with 14, but does have to do with Nier. So if you're a Nier fan, this is for you. So you're going to be talking to the Gossipy Dwarf here in Calusia, or Tamra in Calusia, at X12.9, Y8.7. Word about Kamra will be the quest you're looking for. And you will be standing around where I am standing right now. And this will take you over here to this area, which will be doing the story. It's completely optional, has nothing to do with the story for Final Fantasy XIV, so you can skip it if you like. So that is going to conclude the 24-man raid locations and quests. Alright, so next is going to be the primal or the fights of Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, and Shadowbringers. The first one is going to be the Warring Triad storyline. This is going to take place with Sephiroth, Sophia, and Zervan, or the Three Fiends. Now, Unakalhai, who would be here if I already didn't do his quests already, will have the Warring Triad quest line. Now, you must unlock Ravana and Bismarck Extreme, which he also will help you unlock. I already did a video on that already, so I'll make sure to link that for you. But to unlock Bismarck and Ravana right outside Fort Temp Manor, off to the left when you exit the manor, there should be an NPC with a blue icon over his head. So the Warren Triad requires the main story quest of Heaven's Ward. As goes light, so goes darkness. And of course, the Gods of Eld prerequisite quest from Yonakaha himself. So in the Rising Stones in Mordona, let's go right to the door here. Which you, you usually do to the main story quest. He'll be standing right here. And you'll be able to unlock the Warring Triad. And you'll come back here every single time for Sephiroth, Sophia, and Zervan. You need to do the Warring Triad to do another quest that includes Unakalhai in the future for Shadowbringers. But this is where you find the Warring Triad. So the next one is going to be the Four Lords story in Stormblood. An auspicious encounter. Soroban will be standing here at the Ruby Sea at X 5.7, Y 15.7, and Hope on the Waves main story quest must be completed. This will take you through Hell's Lid, which is the optional dungeon, and then you'll be going into the Four Lords storyline after that. So last but not least is going to be the Trial of Shadowbringers, which is going to be the Weapon series, the Sorrow of Whirlit. So after completing one of the main story quests in Shadowbringers, you can't really miss it because it'll take you right here, the Resistance Officer, which will be to the left of me, will have Ruby Doomsday. And the locks, which I am right now, at X36.4, Y31.8. This is going to be in the Alamegan Quarter area. So you really cannot miss this. So that is going to conclude the trial side quests or side stories for the expansions. Next is going to be Eureka. Now Eureka ties in with the students of Baldessian or the Isle of Val's disappearance. Also it kind of touches upon how Odin is actually made and why Odin always keeps coming back. So in Ralgar's Reach, Galena here next to the script exchange will have, and we shall call it Eureka, at X 9.8, Y 12.4 in Rago's Reach. You do not need to do the Stormblood Relic Weapon to do the story. All you have to do is level up and do the quests in Eureka to get it done. It's an interesting storyline and also it grants you access to the Baldessian Arsenal, which is a savage dungeon which you actually can do to unlock your Ozma mount. If you're not familiar with Ozma, is one from a previous Final Fantasy game as a super boss. So that's how you unlock, or where to unlock, Eureka. Next is going to be the Hildebrand storyline. Now this one is needs to be done for more than one thing. One, the story. Two, Blue Mage. Three, Trials. And four, he's coming back in Endwalker. So there's a bunch of trials tied to the Hildebrand storyline, which Blue Mages are going to be needing for a couple of spells. There's also some minions some cards, and a barding. In Shadowbringers, he took a hiatus, but they're bringing him back in Endwalker. 
So in the Emerald Avenue in Ulda at X 9.8, Y 8.6, you talk to this NPC here, and you should have the quest, The Rise and Fall of a Gentleman. You need to complete AR 2.0 in order to unlock this. In Heaven's Ward, you talk to Nasu in the Jeweled Crozier. Complete the Heaven's Ward main story at 3.0. And in Kugane, the Conspicuously Inconspicuous Men at Pier 2 in Kugane will have that for Stormblood. So next is going to be the Scholasticate. And this is going to be at X 6.2, Y 9.4, and talk to the gentleman to my right. This is going to be a part of the Ishgardian lore. He would... He who would not be denied. Main story quest must be complete in order for this to pop up. I completely skipped it because I had no interest in this story. But if you guys want to learn about Ishgard lore, this one's for you. As well, right over here is also where Nashu should be for the Hildebrand story quest. If you're wondering where this was. Now this next side story quest, I don't remember if this was a time thing or not, but the Delivery Moogle quest. It's basically a side story which takes you through the life of the Delivery Moogle, which is basically the mailman. So this can be unlocked by doing the 2.0 main story quest and by talking to the NPC next to me in Mordona at X30.4. Y 13.7. Like I said, I don't remember if this was a time thing or not. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. But this is where you can find it. It's pretty interesting. Next is going to be Tales of the Dragon Song War. This needs to be completed after doing 3.3, Litany of Peace. It basically is a walk down memory lane type of thing. So talk to House for Tom Manservant inside of the manor itself in order to accept this quest. Next is going to be the Firmament. Simply do the 3.3 main story quest, Litany at Peace, and then interact with the flyer outside the main crystal in the plaza. Since this is server side, the area should be completed and the festival should be taking place. So there's going to be a crap ton of side quests to do, which you should do because it should unlock the housing area come 6.1. Most likely, I don't really know when Ishgard's housing will be coming out, but that's my best bet. But make sure that you do the firmament in order to unlock it anyway. And you also get two custom delivery clients for Disciples of Hand and Land as well. And also the relic tools for Disciples of Hand and Land also takes place here as well. So last but not least is going to be the Void Quest. Now this one is heavy lore pertaining to the 13th Shard or the Void. You must complete the Warring Triad to completion. That's why Unikaha is here. All role job quests done. That's the job quest you had to do for the completion of the Shadowbringer story. You have to do one, I think it's physical DPS. Magical DPS, Tank, and Healer. Once those are all done, you'll be able to accept the quest Safekeeping, which I believe is from him. And then you'll be able to do the Hero's Journey, which is going to be through her. And that's where the Void quests will be able to be unlocked, I believe, in the same area, which is going to be 10.7x, y 15.2 in the Crystarium. It's, like I said, huge lore dump for the 13th Shard, a.k.a. the Void. Alright, so that is pretty much going to complete all of the side story quests that I can possibly think of to do before and Walker. Now, please note that you don't have to rush to get this done because the story arc of Hydaelyn and Zodiac will end at 6.0, which means you get until 6.1, which is the new story arc, to complete any side story you guys do not have done yet. Take this in stride, do not do it all at once, take your time. But like I said, if you're a huge lore person, all these quests can be very helpful in understanding 
Eorzea, and Final Fantasy XIV in general. So guys, that is going to conclude my ultimate guide to N. Walker preparations. So guys, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. So if you leave a like if you found this useful. Any comments, questions, and or concerns, please put them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out with any questions you might have. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and join the first brood. As a reminder, make sure you hit that notification bell next to my subscribe button. It's where you guys never miss an upload. And follow me on my social media at Zane Lineheart on Twitter and Facebook. If you'd like to join my Discord server, the link will be in the about section on my YouTube banner, or channel, or the world icon on my YouTube banner. Also, I do have YouTube memberships available for those of you who want to support me further and help me make this a full-time job. So until next time, may you ever walk in the glorious light of Lord Bahamut. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in Endwalker.